e-commerce is going to change a lot and it's going to change both for the better and for the worst most people today they rely on the chinese supply chain now if you've been paying attention to geopolitics you've been if you've been paying attention to what's happening out there you should see the writing on the wall and the writing is we're going into the semi new escalated cold war with china when i say we United States and Canada, whatever United States does, Canada follows. And what does this mean to you as whether you're an e-commerce store or Shopify store? The supply chain gets skewed and we're seeing happen today. We're seeing slowdowns on the supply chain due to COVID obviously, but COVID is the straw that broke the camel's back. It's not what started it. It's the straw that broke the camel's back. And so what does this mean to you as an e-commerce business owner? This means you gotta figure out your new supply chain. So there's pros and cons to this. A lot of people will have a lot of issues finding new supply chains. At the exact same time, this gives so much opportunity for us to start focusing more on localism as opposed to globalism. You know, within the supply chain, everybody was accustomed to just-in-time supply chain. Uh, the Japanese invented it. And basically is everything has to function on the T. The T's have to be crossed and the I's have to be dotted and everything is just in time. So in case something happens like a, a massive, we call it the uh, act of God in clauses. So let's say natural disaster or virus is an act of God clause. Everything falls apart and everything is falling apart right now. And people are chaotic, completely chaotic. Their business is slowing down. They can't get their shipments. Uh, a lot of corruption is going on too, uh, based on the ports. And so if you are looking at starting e-commerce company, if you are currently an e-commerce store owner, it's time to start looking at local supply chains. And I think the direction that we're heading to guys is more or less back to high quality products as opposed to shitty quality products. We're accustomed to mass production. We're accustomed to getting subsidized products. We're accustomed to getting Amazon shipment within 24 hours. I think a lot of those things are gonna start changing soon. And I think a lot of more people are gonna start realizing that our supply chain is the most important thing when it comes to economic stability. He who controls the supply chain controls the economy. Mobility is the number one key factor when it comes to economic control. And in the world of mobility in the world is the United States. The United States Navy guarantees the safety of their trade partners. And if you've been paying attention to my recent post, if you haven't read already, This United Nations by Peter Z Zihen, Zihen, please read it. Phenomenal book where it goes to show you it's all about cycles and the cycle right now is the United States retreating back into more nationalistic focus as opposed to global focus and they're going to start more and more pulling away the protection of their Navy which is not good for people that rely on Alibaba, AliExpress and everything that comes from the Chinese supply chain. And so depending on the products that you have today, depending on where you're located start seeing if you can start minimizing minimizing you know it's not overnight like this but start seeing if you can minimize the reliance on your supply chain to china <laughs> you know like i don't need to keep on repeating the writing is on the wall whether that is looking to supply chain in europe locally if possible uh, and what I mean by locally, I don't mean just in your country. If I'm, not, if I'm in Canada, my supply chain's in North America, I'm happy. If you're in Europe, your supply chain's within Western Europe nations, you're good. But more or less, not relying on the Chinese supply chain. And I think this is really imperative. And you got to think about, like, how many people have small e-commerce companies. Like, we're, like, I'll give you an example. We have Shopify here in Canada, one of our darling unicorn companies from Ottawa, with Toby as the CEO and founder. And... Shopify has done a phenomenal, amazing job. I give them massive credit and kudos where credit is, uh, where credit is due. But a lot of these people rely on Alibaba. They do drop shipping with Alibaba. They, they rely on just-in-time delivery with Alibaba, so overnight freights, right? They pay extra for that. That's not gonna exist for much longer. And if it does exist, it's gonna be so much more fucking expensive because we're going into economic war. The number one war is tariff war, which Trump already announced. We're going into currency wars. That's a whole different fucking realm. I can make a whole video about currency. And I've done. I've had Brent Johnson on this episode. And he has his milkshake theory, which he states within the short term. In the medium term, the U.S. dollar is a stronger th towards a liquidity crunch because the U.S. dollar is premium. So there's going to be a dollar shortage around the world. 
And so that's something to keep in mind. Specifically, if you're Canadian, though, this affects us in a in a in a negative manner. So my recommendation, if you're Canadian and Canadian business owner, try to keep as much as your Canadian liquidity, your cash, within UST, at least for the short term and medium term. And so going back to the supply chain, you need to make a checklist of what your supply chain is right now. Whether it's Alibaba, AliExpress, and China, all these different manufacturers or distributors. And then you need to make a separate list of where you can substitute for the supply chain. And yeah, it's going to be difficult. And maybe you have to pivot your business. But that's what entrepreneurship is. You know, we're, we humans for the last, like, since pre-World War II, we're accustomed to safety. Safety is not the status quo of human beings. It's asymptomatic what we're experiencing right now. Meaning this is not the status quo. It's not normal what we experienced since World War II. Where everything's peace and everything's okay. No, 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 no. And it's gonna become much more game theory right now. And you have to be smart about your business strategies. You have to be smart about, can you create your business in an agile, lean way, and can you pivot? It's about pivoting right now. I think the next two years, and people ask me what I wanna invest in, what I wanna do, I'm actually doing nothing directly right now, I'm planning. I've mentioned urban farming. I'm not launching urban farms, I'm not investing. I'm planning, I'm getting the intellectual capital, I'm building up the network, I'm building up everything that I need so when the opportunity is right, everything's there. Then I attack, then I execute. It's in the next year or two, while the markets try to figure out what they're doing. And with, when it comes to the markets, I'm telling you, I think we're gonna be a classical pattern of a W where we're gonna have more, the Treasury just announced they're borrowing three trillion fucking dollars from the Fed. Like, my head, this is not good news, guys. Like, we're going to go into an inflated bubble. There's two economies. There's a, there's a stonk market and there's a real economy. But the stonks are going to pump until they don't pump anymore. And they're going to crash hard. And the best case scenario is deflation, right? So we don't crash completely. But deflation to a very long term, very similar to Japan. Look at this. Oh, the light. Very similar to Japan for stagflation. And hopefully that's how it stays. It stays as a stagflation. But you gotta, you gotta start planning now, guys. Everything, you have all this time right now. Plan, plan, plan. So you're agile. So you can pivot very fast. So you can make the right movements when you need to make them. Don't be looking things in hindsight. Don't be wishing you done, did stuff, right? Could've, would've, should've. You have so much opportunity right now to just make a contingency plan A, contingency plan B, contingency plan C. And this is what I'm doing right now. I'm just spending my time. People always ask me what to invest in. Like, I'm not a professional investor. Uh, I'm not. I'm not a hedge fund manager. You know, I'm just a regular guy. You know, serial entrepreneur that likes to build businesses. That I, I'm very curious for different things. But the number one thing that I'm seeing, there's a common denominator among the most, the people that I respect, the people that I trust. There's a common denominator among them, and that is they are just sitting on U.S. greenback cash right now and planning. Warren Buffett the other day. If you haven't watched it, watch it. Four hours. Phenomenal talk. They ask him what he's, what's he investing? Nothing. He sold all his stocks to the airline, from the airline industries and he's sitting on, on a north of $100 billion of cash because there's, there's no opportunity right now. The bottom's gonna get way more bottom. Like, people think we hit the bottom now, <laughs> forget about it, man. We got fuck. we're going south. And Warren Buffett knows this. Like I said, go watch his video. And so the whole moral of this story when it comes to e-commerce or any business in general, start pivoting. Start planning right now because things are things are about to change rapidly and if you're not ready You're gonna be left behind and I'll leave it at that leave a comment below this video like subscribe and I'll talk to you guys soon. Peace out